Live your life to the fullest. Be the individual that you are in all aspects of life. Motorcycling is just a starting point. Motorcycling is just one aspect of that. It can help that mindset propagate outward and that's always gonna be positive. What's up guys? First video in this new helmet. Huh? Huh? The subject I want to cover in this video is going to be myths. Uh, we've all heard old wives tales. You've, maybe you've heard it from your riding buddies. Maybe you've heard it from your mom. Uh, some of them we know to be false. Some of them we learn over time to be false. And some of them to this day we still believe. Some of the ones I'm going to cover I still believe. Uh, but there's a lot of myths. A lot of myths that go into motorcycling that people have and you know, live by. <laughs> so I just want to talk about the myths that I've heard, ones that I've at times believed myself. The batteries I'm using right now for my audio recorder are actually for my front door sensor for my house alarm. So I'm leaving my home unarmed without my alarm for you guys. So please smash the like button guys because I might not come back to a house. Had a bit of a GoPro falling off the helmet issue, but we've since fixed that. All right, where were we? Myths! You know, motorcycles are gonna kill you! You're gonna die! Dude, you're not gonna die. I mean, you might, honestly. Uh, the most dangerous time when it comes to motorcycling is that initial point where you start learning. You know, your first three months, your first six months, your first year, that can be a dangerous time. Um, as well as any time you're on a new motorcycle for the first time, or you just bought one, you know, there's a learning curve to get comfortable, to gain confidence, to gain ability, regardless of your experience. And if your experience is nothing and you're on a new bike, you know, these things compound uh, and it's dangerous. Um, it's not going to kill you. You know, nobody's going to make you twist the throttle on that 1000. Nobody's going to make you do wheelies. Nobody's going to make you triple pass and go up the center median. That's all up to you, uh, just like anything else. It can be dangerous. It's as dangerous as you let it be. Obviously, you know, the drivers and the other people is something that you can't necessarily control. But, I mean, I'm, I'm riding in all of my videos. I'm riding and talking. I'm not paying perfect attention. I'm not a perfect rider. I don't have many close calls, guys. If I did, I'd put them in the thumbnails. You know, I'd be using it for videos to get views. I, I don't have close calls. And I think that's true for a lot of people. I mean, you can pick where you go. You can pick when you ride. You can pick how you ride. All of these things can contribute to your safety and it's not gonna kill you. The bike is just a bike. A gun is just a gun. What matters is the person on it, the choices they make, right? It's as dangerous as you let it be. Uh, you know, a lack of discipline, an addiction to adrenaline, that shit can get you killed, but that can get you killed doing anything, man. That's not a motorcycle-centric danger. That's dangerous regardless. People kill themselves in cars all the time with those exact same addictions, so. It is helpful and more safe to have a level of maturity when it comes to that. Uh, to also have some mechanical sympathy to where you're not always going balls to the wall to the bike. It's safer for the bike, but it's also going to pay off because you're not going to be riding on the limit nearly ever. So, yeah, you're not going to die, man. You're not going to die. You might die, okay? You might <laughs> Let's be honest. You might die, but I don't, don't use that as an excuse. Use that as motivation to try harder, to pay more attention. You know, just make sure you're present. Uh, make sure you're enjoying the moment and you're in the moment and that's not necessarily only going to keep you from dying that's going to help you live more which is a big component when it comes to motorcycles it shouldn't be all about focusing on the bad and negative aspects you should focus on the good you should be living and that should cascade outward into your non-riding life live your life to the fullest be the individual that you are in all aspects of life motorcycling is just a starting point motorcycling is just one aspect of that it can help that mindset propagate outward and that's always going to be positive uh, another myth what we got can't ride in the rain you can't ride in the rain did you ride that motorcycle in the rain as if our tires lose all traction and they're not made of rubber like, I, I do not understand where this myth comes from, but it is so pervasive and prevalent. I implore you to just watch a MotoGP race. They don't like stop the race because there's rain. These guys are leaning further than most people believe is even possible, further than most people will ever lean. And they're in the rain. These bikes are faster and lighter than anything we can buy. And they're doing just fine. <laughs> That's all the proof you need. Show that to anybody. I'm sure there are like 20 second reels that you can find 
a MotoGP race in the rain and just show them. Like, if they can do it, you can absolutely do it on the full traction on the uh, city streets. Is it more dangerous? Absolutely. It's more dangerous. It's harder. But like, to me, there's nothing that beats the clarity that comes from just a soaked ride in the rain. Just being totally soaked, it clears your mind because you got to focus on what you got to focus on. You know, <laughs> I mean, it might sound uncomfortable, but you know, being drenched, feeling the water dripping down your back, it makes you feel like you're doing something. And it's something not everybody does. Uh, there are a lot of fair weather riders. What's that? That's a person who, uh, yeah, it's a little too windy. There's a 10% chance of rain today. I'm not riding in that. That's a fair weather rider. These are guys that, you know, the, these are the guys with no miles on their bike because the only time they'll ride is whenever it's perfect, absolutely picture perfect conditions in every single way. They're wasting time. Okay, you only have so much life, guys. If the littlest weather problem is gonna stop you from riding, you you just instantly gave up on 50% of your opportunities to ride. At least 50. No day is per not many perfect days exist. It's not a perfect day today. I don't care. If I did care, you wouldn't see this video. I wouldn't get nearly as many miles and as much time on the seat. These tires are built well. I actually, I choose personally, I choose all season tires. Uh, these are the Rhodes 6, I believe. And it's more of an all season tire with, uh, it's like, I think they, I believe they call it an ultra high performance all season tire, something like that. I have the same ones on my car. High horsepower race car with tires that can do high performance, but perform very well in rain in wet conditions because I understand that the road surfaces are not perfect. This is not a prepped surface. It's gonna, you're gonna have rainy days. You're gonna get caught out in it. There's oil slicks, there's debris. And in situations like that, you know, reality, in reality, you want a tire built for that. Um, and so that's the tires I choose. They also have simultaneously longer life. So you just have to replace your tires less often. Uh, they are not the grippiest, but I don't have many grip problems. I have traction control. You know, it senses if I lose traction and makes adjustments accordingly when it comes to power and braking. So I can't tell the difference, but I can definitely tell the difference in how long my tires last. So that's the biggest thing for me. And it gives me that extra little peace of mind knowing that you know, when it is raining, my tires are built for that. I believe these tires in particular, as they wear, they become more grippy in the rain. It's crazy. It's crazy that that's where we are engineering wise when it comes to tires. And that's again, you know, thanks to racing. They put everything they learn in the racetrack application into the tires they make for us, just regular civilians, regular people. I think that's super cool that the technology just filters down and we get to enjoy that. So. Don't believe the hype. You can absolutely ride in the rain, and you should. It's some of my favorite rides have been in the rain. Now, is it painful on my bike, on naked bikes? Yeah, it can be pretty painful um, in certain situations with the rain coming down, but that's not every bike, guys. A lot of you guys are sitting behind a windscreen. A lot of you guys are on your Harley, your, or you're on your Super Sport, totally tucked. You're not gonna feel the rain at all. Just go ride in the damn rain. I'm not saying push it to the limits in the rain. Uh, that does take some level of skill and talent, but don't let it scare you from commuting. Don't let it scare you from going get some groceries just because it's raining. You might really enjoy it. So I would highly encourage doing that if you haven't. Even if you've been a fair weather rider so far, you can always change that. Today is a new day. One more thing, let's see. How about brights? I see a lot of people running their brights uh, at all times. They believe it gives them enhanced visibility. Um, and then the daytime under certain circumstances, I guess I, I do think that it's possible. Um, honestly, on my R1, most of the time I ran the brights because on a lot of sport bikes, whenever you have the regular lights on, there's two lights and only one's on because the other one is the brights. And I can't, I'm just so sick of being at the gas station or being waved down in the road or a guy that's at the McDonald's parking lot waving at, hey, 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 your light's not on, put your other light on. It's like, bro, the other ones, 
I just got tired of it, so I just ran the brights. Um, but some people do that because they think it gives them enhanced visibility. Um, I believe I saw a study. I, I don't know if this was a study or a YouTube video. I don't have the reference. I can't cite anything, but I'm going to say it from memory. And uh, it was at night, one headlight can be more accurate for the drivers because they see that one headlight and they know where it's at as opposed to seeing your motorcycle, which is small, and then there's two headlights, which are small, and in their mind, for some people, it can tell them, well, that's a car, but far away, whenever you're really a motorcycle pretty close. So I never liked running two headlights, on top of the fact that when my second headlight was my brights, at night, you're gonna dazzle people, uh, which, <laughs> which is a weird word, but people have a tendency to go into what they're looking at. And if what they're looking at is your headlights and they can't really see anything else, it's a recipe for disaster. You're pulling them into you. And so I never use my brights at night unless, you know, no one's around, which I think is the way you're supposed to use brights. But man, I see people using their brights at all points in time. Added visibility is cool to a point. It's not cool if it becomes a distraction and if it's a distraction to the drivers rather than an alert. It's how I personally feel. Uh, and that one is just, again, my personal feelings. You guys can feel and think totally different, which is okay. I'm not opposed to different viewpoints. If you guys disagree, by all means, let me know. Tell me about it. Tell me why. I'm the type of person that if you explain something and you have good reasoning, I can change my beliefs. That's one of my favorite things about making these videos is just interacting with you guys and learning so much uh, that I didn't know that I never thought. So I appreciate you guys. So anyway, guys, that's the video. I really appreciate every single one of you guys watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Later, y'all.